Okay, well, uh, let's get started then. Um, welcome everyone, thank you for joining this, this session. Uh, my name is Thibault Lestan, I'm a, I'm a research software engineer at the University of Oxford. I'm within the kind of the central uh, research software engineering group. And so that's the Oxford Research Software Engineering Group. Um, we're in the Department of Computer Science, but we are very much working across the university on different software projects. And so um, in this session, we're going to talk about the Oxford Code Review Network, which is um, it's an initiative that I started um, in the summer with the support of and the feedback of my colleagues from, from the, the IRC group, but also the local chapter of the UK Reproducibility Network uh, at Oxford. Um, and the, the aim of that initiative is to make it as easy as possible for researchers at Oxford to do code reviews together. Um, it's, it started pretty well. Uh, we, we got a, a lot of enthusiasm for that initiative, but slowly but surely it lost a bit of momentum. Uh, and so kind of very selfishly, I wanted to do this workshop um, pretty much for you to kind of help me get like think about how I could get that network uh, back on its feet and so in particular what I'm would be really happy to to receive from you is uh, suggestions on what could be done differently to engage more researchers in participating in that network and also what to do next um, and I will give you more details about that initiative but that's really the, the goal of the of the workshop and so in discussing this I also hope that we can together exchange some ideas uh, that would be valuable not just for me but for everyone um, on code review in academia in general but also some practical ideas that some of you who would want to start similar uh, initiatives um, could use uh, maybe at your own institution. So um, there's a google document uh, for this workshop the link is in the chat um, you can, at any time you can ask questions, there's a question sections right here, uh, which just moved. So feel free to write uh, your question there. You, you, can, you can put your name first uh, if you want, if you don't have to. Um, and yeah, questions, general comments, feel free to do that at any time. We'll try to come back to that in the, the last part of the workshop. Okay, so I'd like to, so I, I suspect that some of you may have a good idea what a code review is. Um, and also some of you might not know uh, or, or might not have experience in, in code review because code review is, is actually quite a vague, vague term. So what I'd like to do is start with a, a little activity um, so that every one of you is in a good position to actually reflect on the choices that I've been doing for setting up the code review network. And so what I'd like you to do in, in the first um, five minutes, um, the next five minutes is to try and describe what comes to your mind when you hear code review. So in particular, um, what does it look like? So if you have to, if I were to ask you, can you draw a code review, what would you draw, right? Uh, who's involved? Is it is it maybe a supervisor and a student? Is it two colleagues? Is it a researcher and an REC and several RECs? Is it two people, more than two people, one person? Um, when is it happening? Um, is it something that happens once, maybe regularly? Is it before publishing a paper, is it all throughout the research project, right? Um, and so if you have a bit more time, if you feel inspired, you can try and also describe why would people want to do code review? So what's there to gain for the people involved, right? What's the reasons to participate? And what kind of process researchers would follow to uh, do a code review? Uh, you can do you can do it um, on your own. Um, even better, if you go to the uh, collaborative notes, there is at the very bottom, there is a, well, not quite the very bottom, at the bottom, there's a starter activity. And then what you can do is that you can just write your answers there. Um, and so feel free to just copy and paste this set of W words um, to, to write your own questions, right? So. I'm going to give you five minutes. I'm going to set the timer on. Um, five minutes, we'll have a look at what you've been writing. Um, you don't have to answer everything. Um, just uh, the idea here is just you, for you to take a moment to th think about what you think is a code review. And uh, there are many different answers to that question. All right.
yeah, just really to try and capture what comes to your mind, whatever it is. Um, there's, there's no, there's no right answer to that. Okay, I'll give you like maybe a minute more and then Okay, um, we don't have a lot of time, so I'll just go feel, if you want to continue writing, feel free to write, write um, down your thoughts. Um, so the one thing we see here, that there's a lot of different things that, that comes up, um, different contexts. It could be, I think that, that, that is quite recurring is, is that a code review happened on when a pull request, for instance, when contributing to a repo on GitHub and GitLab. Um, Generally, we all agree that this is something that you, know, you somebody looking at somebody else's code. Um, in terms of who is uh, involved, um, yeah, it could be a supervisor or somebody with more experience looking at um, the code written by somebody with less experience to to maybe teach and, and do quality insurance. Uh, it could be done in a meeting room, in person, or online video chats, as opposed to some kind of asynchronous discussion on, on GitHub. Um, pull request again, uh, pull request and why, yeah, okay, quality insurance, code quality. Um, well, that's a good point. Ensure that satisfy objectives of the project. Um, so if you have very clear outcomes, you want to do a review in order to assess that outcomes that you met. Okay. So but we're not going to go through this. Thank you very much for putting all of that down. It's really useful. Um, and you, you can go in your own time. The one thing that we get out of this in this code review is quite diverse. There's a lot of ways that we could actually define a code review or the way it could go. And it's going to depend on the context, right? And so um, in order to set up that code review network, uh, I had to make, make some assumptions into what a code review is. And so when I'm, when me personally, I have a code review in mind, this is what I'm imagining, right? This is um, uh, two, two individuals, maybe more, uh, having a look at uh, some code. And typically one of them is the author of the code and the others are reviewers and they're here to provide feedback on, on, on the code and especially the code quality. And so for the code review network, from the code review network perspective, right, it's not the, it's not the, this is not the definition of the code review, but from the, the code review network perspective, 
a definition of a code review is, it's a short conversation over a short piece of code, right? Um, it's for everyone. So especially we want everyone to be able to review um, the ideas that we want it to be accessible um, because you, um, I don't think that you have to be a Python expert to review some Python code, right? Um, if, you, if you're actually a beginner in Python and you can understand the code, then this means that the code, the code is actually really well written probably, and that's really valuable feedback. So beginners have, uh, can, can review, that's important. It's happening throughout the duration of the project, not just at the time of the publication. So uh, regularly throughout the research project, the code reviews are going on. And the reason why I, I'd like for this to happen more is because code review, are, uh, it's a great way to actually improve software um, and particularly readability and, and therefore sustainability, right? Um, it's, a, it's a great learning opportunity for everyone, reviewers and reviewees. So it's about knowledge transfer potentially across disciplines. And then as well, it's, it's, it's an opportunity for researchers to, to talk about code, right? And to be open about their code, which is something that, that is not, we're not quite there yet, uh, quite the opposite in fact. Usually code is kind of done in isolation. It's, it's hard to get people trying to share their code and show the, their code to, to each other. Um, so that's, that's, that's the reason why. And so the idea of the code review network is to have this happen as regularly as possible between researchers across the University of Oxford. And so kind of the, the, the idea that, that I came up with is, is this is code review network. And the, if I had to represent kind of success, uh, this is this. Is this. Uh, if I can make it work. And so, you know, you have the University of Oxford, you have researchers, different profiles. Some of them are mostly experimenters, uh, theorists, um, um, data scientists, but they are in different departments, uh, but they're regularly to just meet each other and do code reviews together, right? And that's kind of the, the very end goal where I wanna go. And so to facilitate this, um, there is a GitHub repository um, where, if you are a researcher and you, you, you want, you've got a piece of code that you'd like to be reviewed, then what you can do is you can open an issue uh, on that GitHub repository. And if you are now looking to be a reviewer, if you're a researcher and you want to review some code, you can just uh, leave a, a comment on that issue, say that you'd like to review. So for instance, we can look at an example, um, which actually happened two days ago. Somebody came in uh, with, with a little Python code and said, um, I have a very short query about a 15 line Python function. It shapes an array based on an integer that is passed into the function. And then this function is terribly inefficient. So I'd like to know a bit more like how, how I'd like to know another pair of eyes to look at my code. And so somebody came in and said, I'd be happy to review your, your code. And then they, they found a time and place well, online place to, to do the review together. So this, is a kind of an online place for people to meet and then they go and do the review in their own time. And so um, there's been a couple of review happening, um, well, more than a couple. And so for mostly, you can see mostly Python, C++. And so it's people from Oxford that come and then say, I'm looking for a reviewer. And again, people from Oxford that come and say, I can review, I'm happy to have a chat with you and review that code. And so in this repo, there's a little bit more than that. There's a lot of information about what is a review. Um, um, about events, about code review. There are code review guidelines to explain you know, what is the process of a code review for the code review network. Um, so there's a typical code review scenario. Uh, a bit of information about the format of code reviews and then motivations, right? Incentives to what would you want to spend time doing this and particularly uh, reviewing code. And then there's, there's how to get started because I suspect that not everybody is familiar with GitHub. So it's important that people who are not familiar with GitHub are at least able to open an issue. And then we have, um, there's some guidelines for reviewers, right? For people who are not experienced with reviewing, it's, it can be very, very daunting actually to you know, look at a code and say, well, what if I have nothing to say about this code? Uh, and so we have a list of things that reviewers could look for. So going from the very kind of low hanging fruits to more involved things. So like you start with code style, you know, is the code following a code style? If not, it would be a good idea. Are uh, the variables and functions well named? Uh, and so we go down to complex if statements all the way to actually talking about performance, which is very far in the priority list. 
And then lastly, there's a, a little guide about how to best do remote code review. So you, about using Visual Studio Code you know, with the Lightstreet plugin, using Teammate, um, and using a range of tools like, like Fluebits um, to pair program and do code reviews. Okay, uh, and so just taking the time. Um, um, so that's that's the main place where people can go and meet and then uh, go and do code reviews. Um, so what happened with this? Well, uh, this repository that I just showed uh, went live, let's say, on in June 2020, so last summer. Um, I managed to secure some funding from the University of Oxford uh, through um, um, a lot of money that is dedicated to this kind of initiative. Um, and so the idea is to, um, parallel to these reviews happening, to have a set of events to train researchers in code reviewing and to organize kind of code review workshops. So that money was meant to pay for rooms and catering, you know, because I was very optimistic in July. I would hope that uh, by March 2021, we would be able to do that, but um, um, so it's not possible. Um, but in July 2020, we had a virtual launch uh, to in introduce that network to the, as much as much people as possible, as many people as possible in Oxford. Um, it was, I think it was a success. We had about a little bit under 100 people attending, uh, which I think was good. And then in July, August, uh, a few reviews happened, most of which I showed uh, a little bit more than 10 reviews. Um, in August, or this repo was actually forked by um, some people at the University of Manchester, which was really, really pleased to, to, to see. So the initiative um, was actually duplicated. Um, but in September, the activity on the network kind of stalled a little bit. Um, and it, it lost a little bit of its initial momentum. Um, and so, again, uh, we can think of why this happened and what, what is possible to do next to actually um, get it back on its feet. Um, but before we do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about what I think can be the lesson, lessons learned from, from that. So the first lesson that I think is interesting to, to, to stress is that uh, I think researchers are interested, researchers and research software engineers, but um, um, there's a general interest, I think, in, in having this, this sort of um, uh, network. I'm just going to try and... Yeah, the, the, the whole concept of a code review generally appeals to researchers, but most people are, would be keen to participate in code reviews, right? But the struggle is um, that they struggle to find somebody to actually do code review with. So this is something that the network can help with. So. Um, there is definitely interest in the research community. But one problem that I identify is that if you actually go back and look at the reviews, then you notice that all of the reviewer is kind of always somebody with a, a lot of experience in software and the reviewee is somebody with not much experience in software. So that's good. Um, that that's means that you know some people with not a lot of experience can be able to find people with experience to review code. That's, that's that's a good thing, but generally, I think the message that everybody can be a reviewer uh, didn't really get through. Um, I th it's, I'm not surprised. It's, it's, I think it's a hard thing to sell. Um, so this is maybe something that um, could be worked on. Another common feedback was that you know my code cannot be reviewed, um, and sometimes sometimes it's true. It's difficult because if we want to have very short reviews, like one hour and a few lines of code, then that means that you have to be able to break down your code and extract a snippet that would be suitable for a review. And um, if your code is maybe a long script or a collection of three or four long, heavily coupled functions, and then it's it's hard to extract a piece of code. So, so it would be hard to actually review that code in just one hour. Um, and sometimes you might think that your code is well, you know, it's too domain specific to actually be reviewed by somebody that's outside your field. And the last bit of the feedback I want to give you is that I found that institutions are interested. So I put an S at institutions. That's my belief because, you know, I just tried at Oxford. So it's very statistically irrelevant because uh, it's just one university. But um, it was relatively straightforward to convince the people with the money to actually support that, that initiative. So I think that's a good thing, um, maybe to replicate it in other universities. 
Um, in the in the time that we have left, um, now I'd like to invite comments and suggestions on what do you think could have been done differently in order to to increase the the engagement of researchers with that network. There was a there was initial enthusiasm, but as you can see, there's been maybe 10, 11 reviews, and then in September it kind of lost its momentum. So maybe something could have done, been done differently, and I would be really interested in knowing what you think could have been done differently. Um, and so what do you think also I could do next in order to start this network again? And so there are a couple of ways that we can do this. First, if you go back to the shared document, you scroll down and down and down, a long way down, there's a feedback in group discussion section. And so in there, there are three questions again that you can try and answer. So if you were to start a code review network at your institution tomorrow, what would you do differently compared to the one I just showed for the Oxford Code Review Network. And if you were to start a code review again at your institution tomorrow, what would you borrow maybe from the code review network? Or what do you think was a good idea? And um, and this is uh, the question is duplicated. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a third question, which obviously I can't remember now, but it's okay. Well, these two questions will do. Um, so you can try and answer these questions. Um, but also I'm very happy now for anyone um, to unmute and maybe share your thoughts. Um, and maybe um, if you have experience in setting a similar network, then that would be really valuable. So, so Stefan's got a comment there. There's a lot of stuff happening at the top of the document. That's one. And then Simon asked the question. I've got a question as well. Okay. Okay, good. Oh yeah. I just completely forgot about this. Um, so maybe we can go through the questions and then uh, try and have a, a chat. We have about seven minutes left, I think. I've, I've um, got my end up rather than okay, type go, the question. Go ahead. Then. Well, the protocol. Um, so, so basically, we have thought about exactly this. Um, we've talked about it quite a lot with the Southampton um, research software community. And the thing, the point where I almost stumbled, it was like the incentive for actually doing the review. There's an obvious incentive for having your code reviewed, but it was a way of like you know, rewarding the reviewers. And we thought, well, thought lots of different things. You know, like you'd have a mutual benefit. You do a review, and you're going to get code reviews of your own. But that sort of that was the sort of travesty of the commons kind of I think killed that idea. And and then could we have some form of credits, you know, and badging or anything like that? And, and we never really go off the ground. I think because we got so wrapped up in how to deal with the incentives. So. I mean, do you feel like you're, the incentives you're providing for the reviewers are strong enough? And is that maybe the reason why it really sort of sloped off a little? No, I think you're right. I think that's one of the problems that we're having. Um, my idea is that when you review, I mean, I think we agree, when you review, you also learn, for, it's, it's good for you because you can go maybe in another department and, and learn from, you know, how, you know, how would a psychologist write some Python and then you can write, you can learn different things, but you have to be willing to, to want to actually, it's it's a way to upgrade your skills, but it's hard to sell. I understand. I think that's the problem. That's one of the problem that that we've been having here as well. Well, find us another question. Hello. Um, it seems like one of the one of the things that could be really challenging is is um, people just working very different domains. And when reviewing the code, the the domain specific. You know, pretty much obscures any sort of obvious issues with the code itself, perhaps in certain cases. Um, what your comments on that were? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to let everyone um, chat. Um, and so, uh, for the Code Review Network, it was a kind of a bold assumption, I think, uh, to think that anybody can review anybody anybody's code. I think in certain situations it is hard, but usually, my thought were that. If you have, you, you can already bring a lot of value by looking at the code and say, I really don't understand what it is about. Um, you know, if it's, you, you can say, well, I don't know what this mathematical methods does, but I kind of know the steps that your code is taking or this, this piece of code. I can tell that you know, you're applying this method and then you're doing this to the data. I don't really know why you're doing this, but I, I can already see that you're doing this. So that means that already it's, 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 it's already quite readable. And that's already not a given in many, many academic codes. So I think there's room for a kind of interdisciplinary code reviews. Um, it's a bit of a gamble, I admit, um, but it's been one of my assumptions. 
something I was wondering about, sort of follow on from that, is whether or not, given given these really nice materials you've got in that uh, in that Git repo, whether or not that could almost be sort of a a blueprint by which um, individual research groups could set up a culture of reviewing where there's much more commonality in terms of domain knowledge. Yeah, uh, I think that's, to be honest, this is one thing that I'd like to do next. I think it would be easier to, to get it started because then you have people who know each other and who, who share a domain, right? Um, and so I've been meaning to maybe get in touch with a few um, research groups and try and, and get them to do this kind of code review network with, within their research groups or within their labs. Uh, and this ties to something that is in actually in the questions. Um, um, there's a question about, do you think it needs to be restricted to an institution or, or is there a benefit from doing this versus having a UK IRC wide maybe or a language specific one? Yes, absolutely. I think that this is just, this was just a try, something that I wanted to set up at Oxford. There's no reason that this could not be made at different scales, maybe a smaller scale in the lab as we just talked about, or maybe at a bigger scale, but that would be even more challenging, I think. Might worth trying. Hold the material is there, you really feel free to just take it and then try it on whatever context that you want. Um, it's, it's licensed so that you can, you can duplicate it. So I've got, I had a question, I mean, but it's a fairly trivial one, but I mean, so how many reviews did you have in your bank of reviewers? And the, the amount of coverage, so you said you got some response from Oxford, was that mainly distributed in particular departments like physics or, or, or did you find that you get a, a crossover? Yeah, I think for the reviewers, to be honest, if you look back, it's mostly the <laughs> research stuff for engineering group reviewing, reviewing code. So not only, but mostly. Um, so otherwise it's most, it's pretty diverse. I mean, I can have a look. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's pretty diverse. If we look at the, the code reviews that happened um, on the top of my head, there's engineering, psychology, that's psychology, that's fluid mechanics, that's quantum physics, fluid mechanics again. So yeah, it's, I think it's pretty diverse, but again, it is, there's, not, there's not a lot. So um, it's hard to, you know, extract some conclusions out of that. But in terms of language, I think it's pretty clear, based on surprise. Um, I think we have time for, maybe if we have two minutes left, um, I'll just go, ah, it's okay, there's a lot of discussion that we don't really have time for. Um, so I appreciate that you want to keep the barrier low for potential reviewers to volunteer to review code. Do you also recognize it in some way? Oh, okay. Perhaps linking stronger to the network as a reviewer could help sustain the community. Yeah, good feeling to pay then even, yeah. Um, that's one approach. It's a valid approach. I think it would maybe even work better. Um, yeah, the assumption was that what actually tying back to what Simon said as a start, trying to make everyone be a reviewer to kind of get that message across it by you, you gain almost as much by reviewing code. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard sell. But maybe, maybe a solution would be to actually have a pool of reviewers, the committed reviewers, and then whoever wants to actually join them is free to, to do so. We should start thinking about going back. If we can all thank you both for his interesting workshop to a virtual thing. And uh, we all go back to the main room. Do people know how to get back to the main room? Thank you, everyone. I'll try to answer some of the questions in the document. Thanks Bye. very much. Thanks, very interesting. Thanks.